Better FS. A better file system for Linux desktop. And it's badly misunderstood. There's a lot of issues that people just can't really wrap their brain around. And I sat there for four or five hours, I think, of a live stream, just kind of hacking away with some people like contributing and saying, oh, you should do this or that. And really, this is all that knowledge condensed down into a very short segment. I'm going to try and keep this around 20 minutes, but we got a lot to cover today. We're going to be going over basic commands, the actual structure of BetterFS, and how to use it, because there's chances if you've done like a vanilla Arch install, you're not even using BetterFS correctly with sub volumes. And then you got snapshots, which is the best feature in BetterFS, one that you should be using if you're using BetterFS. And then, of course, just standard RAID for some redundancy. And I'm just going to be doing mirrored RAID arrays because that's probably going to speak to the most amount of people. Again, this is for desktop Linux. In business, eh, I don't think I'll probably use BetterFS, but I wouldn't really use Linux for file sharing in many instances as it's not my favorite. So with all that said, let's get into it. Really do a deep dive into BetterFS so you can better understand it. So we're going to start like I do all my tutorial based videos with the guide on ChrisTitus.com. This one's ChrisTitus.com btrfs-guide or butterfs and from there you'll be able to get all of these commands and also the links in the description but you need to know certain things about betterfs the file system itself uh, it depends on how you install it too many people just install betterfs and goes hey i'm got a betterfs partition therefore i'm using it and that is not true the first thing you need to know is the structure you have your standard top level partition and then you have sub volumes underneath that nothing should be stored in this top level here uh, if it is and you install let's say linux on your top level you'll not be able to use snapshots and all the other cool features of better fs so it's super important to actually make sub volumes before you install linux I only bring this up because I used ArchFi and it was a complete nightmare because I installed it all on the top level. To check to see where everything is, we can simply do some of the basic commands. Now I'm going to actually jump to the middle of the basic commands here just because I'm talking about this top level and the sub volumes. Uh, just know that uh, your root should be a sub volume and typically that can be the only sub volume you have on your whole system That's totally okay. I actually have a couple different ones as right here If you do a disk free, you'll see I have four different physical disks with better FS on them and they're all independent uh, Sub volumes and I did that kind of on purpose as I'm not doing any raid arrays but getting back to what we talked about, we need to actually do a listing. So we're gonna actually do a subval list and our mount point. And we're gonna just take the very front part of that mount point, come over to our terminal, type this in, and you'll see here is all the sub volumes we have on this. So you have the top one, which is root, the dash at, at uh, 256, or actually 288 is the ID. Uh, the IDs definitely come into hand handy, especially when you have specific names for what you got going on. So if we go in cat etc f stab, you'll see that when we mount our actual root directory as betterfs, I actually specify the sub volume 288. Now you can jump around here and go to specific time shift things. So I do a time shift of my root directory so I could easily restore and that restore happens instantaneously. So it's an atomic swap and it just happens immediately. So if I needed to, let's say, just get pushed to this specific time, I could say, you know what, I'm going to go with ID 304 and then just change this sub volume to 304 and reboot and I would be at that exact time as far as a restore. Or I could go through time shift and copy that entire sub volume into my root. Uh, however you wanna play it, you can do either one, but just know you can boot directly into these different snapshots and it's all deduplicated. So it doesn't have an exact one-to-one -one copy of every single file. It's, it's how BetterFS works is it, 
doesn't need to copy something that is already on the disk. So that's really the power of it. Better FS is the snapshot capabilities, which is fantastic. So just to go ahead, I have another drive that actually mounted as my home drive. So let's uh, let's do a solve volume list again and go home. And you'll notice that we have a couple different options to choose from here. So we're going to go ahead and restore one of these snapshots just so you can see it in person today. So we have one from yesterday, 114, and this is the home path. Uh, if we look at our F-stab, if we look towards home right here, you'll see sub-volume at home. So actually, this one that it's pulling from is right here. Uh, ID 267 is the actual one it's using. So if we want to go ahead and pull a snapshot from 114, we can do that using ID 321. So let's go ahead and go sudo nano etc fstab, and we're gonna change this mount directory over here. So subvol, instead of actually using the name, which I don't recommend, I think when I was doing this, I was uh, tinkering around and I was using the name, just like you don't wanna use like dev sdb3 or something like that, you wanna use the UUID for your actual hard drive. So on here, we'll use the subvolume 321, was that it? Ah, oh well, we'll write that out. Yeah, 321, that was it. So it'll actually go ahead and boot to this one. But before we do that, let's do a listing of what we have here. So uh, this is everything. I don't see anything that's really been changed except for maybe pictures folder. Uh, but let's go ahead and just touch uh, test file dot text. And you'll see if we do a listing, the test files there. But we're gonna go reboot the PC, come back into our terminal and see what we get as far as that. That test file should disappear. All right, log back in and we'll go right to our terminal. Now we'll do a list and sure enough, that test file isn't there. And if you look, actually the pictures folder has been shot back who January 14th as well. That actually had an edit from the 15th. But let's say you're on here and go, oh crap, something happened or I made this big change that was on my other snapshot. Again, you can just go sudo nano etcf stab and flip back to that actual sub volume. But before we do that, let's do a listing of that sub volume just to make sure we, we get it all. So we'll go sudo betterfs sub v or, or volume you can spell it all the way out list and then we're gonna go home now from here we actually want the at home that's id 267 so again i always recommend using sub volume ids as we're on 321 right now we'll go ahead sudo nano etc f stab and we'll come back over into here and i think it was 267 write that out Double check our ID, sure enough it is there, and we're gonna go ahead and reboot again, and we should see the test file come back, and we actually should see that the pictures folder has been modified on the 15th, so let's see what happens. All right, so here we are, we're in our home directory, we'll go listing, and there we are, we're back on our proper sub volume. So that's the power of snapshots. Like you can literally bounce around. I could do this on my root directory. I could do it on my home directory. Um, I have it set up that method. So it's all about that directory structure and getting it set up perfectly. Make sure you pay careful attention to this when you set up your system. As if you set up BetterFS and you're not using sub volumes, it's, you might as well be using any other file system because you're missing out on all of the good parts of BetterFS. So now that we understand that a bit, I want to clarify a couple things here. When I first did BetterFS, I messed up. I put it on my top level instead of an actual sub volume. And to get out of this, I went ahead and made a snapshot to create that sub volume. And then I just basically took that snapshot and needed to boot from it after changing its f-stab to have sub volume ID in that actual thing. Now that sounds easy to do because creating the snap snapshot is very simple and changing the f-stab is also very simple on that snapshot. But there is one more catch here. It's booting from this actual top level. So that means you have to rebuild grub outside of this install. So I had to chmod using a live ISO to accomplish the move from the top level 
to an actual sub volume. So uh, don't do that. Hopefully you didn't mess up or hopefully the installer was a little more friendly. I was using ArchFi and ArchFi's BetterFS is set up incorrectly where it doesn't use a sub volume or BetterFS correctly. So that kind of is a bummer, but uh, you know, that's what I get for using just a random script off the internet. So with that said, uh, you can actually go into these snapshots. Let's say you didn't need to reboot and go into uh, a home and you didn't want to boot from it. You're just like, you know what, that file changed. I just want to grab that one file that changed. Well, it's actually pretty easy to do. So we can easily look at our snapshots. Coming back into here, let's uh, take a peek at our snapshots. So to easily go ahead and mount this snapshot using ID 321, we actually needed to go sudo better, or actually before this, we need to know what device this is. So we'll do lsblk. Uh, we'll know that the home directory is actually on SDE. Is that that's it? So <laughs> I forgot to partition this uh, quite the right way, but this will work just fine. So uh, for most people, though, it would be uh, when using this command is dev sde1 is the actual partition. However, I partition this entire disk to just this one thing, so there's no numbers after it. You can definitely get in trouble doing it this way, but uh, I did it. So now that we know the actual partition that we need to mount, we can go mount. We should have all of our homes. So if we do a listing of home, now let's do a listing of MNT and you'll see that we have the entire home. So we can go into CD MNT, take a list, go to CD Titus, list that, and you'll see that it's that 14th snapshot. So that's kind of cool. All right, so we have that done. Um, now, once we're finished, obviously U mount MNT uh, or pseudo U mount MNT. Uh, and get rid of that mount point so it's not just sitting there hanging out. But it's a neat way to just go ahead and mount one of these snapshots, look at what's in that snapshot, grab that one file that you messed up, grab it back. I never have to worry about this stuff. And the great thing about it is those snapshots take up almost no room. Speaking of which, we need to figure out how much space is on our thing. Now, you have the traditional DF-H and you're like, okay, on the home directory it has 18 gigs used and that well we want to get a little more granular with that with better fs those snapshots do take up some room but how much is better fs taking up so we can figure that out so for disk usage under that and i'll edit my website to reflect this the dash s is a summarized command that you need to use uh, this will actually take a little bit to build, and then once it's built, it'll spit it out right here. So this actually tells me exactly how much is being actually used. Uh, right now, it's using 28 gigs. Uh, it's sharing 15.6 gigs of that across all of our snapshots, which is pretty cool. And we can delete snapshots and kind of clean this up, and you'll you'll see this exclusive number go down. The set share number uh, will probably stay about the same, but this total number will actually get reduced as well. So very cool, so you can kind of get that. You also have the disk free command as well, which gives you a little more info than what we saw from the using DF on the other one. So if we go DF, dash home uh, we can go ahead and do that you'll see the data set itself takes about 17 gigs the system is using about 8 megs metadata is 1 gig and then the global reserves using 36 so this kind of gives you a little bit of a breakdown of how betterfs uses your file system and to get a breakdown of your sub volumes and seeing what all is being used because you can add multiple devices in sub volumes you can use file system or fi show and that shows that so let's do that real fast and you'll see right there I have four different hard drives assigned to four different sub volumes. So I'm not using any RAID here or any anything like that. I probably will go ahead and move this around a little bit and probably do some type of RAID. Now there's a couple things I threw in here. This is actually scrubbing the sub volume. This kind of cleans it up a bit and then also balance, uh, which balance is more important when you have multiple disks in uh, uh, the same sub volume. This balances the actual uh, data between both disks, which is important to do every once in a while. That way you don't have one disk completely fill up or 
one, you know, just kind of get out of whack. It also helps with performance on better FS because if it's constantly reading everything from one disc, you're going to lose a lot of that read write benefit from having like, let's say a striped array in, in better FS. So balancing your, your data is important with the balance command and then make sure you use these filters because if you don't use the filters, it's just going to go through block by block every disc. It'll take forever. It'll use up all your resources. It's just no fun. Uh, this basically just says, hey, filter it based on block usage. If you have more than 50% of a block being used, it needs to be balanced. So that's what it does. It just kind of, you know, gets it to the point where it'll, it'll easily run this balance command and it'll do it rather quickly and efficiently. But let's say you mess up and don't do that. I went ahead and added the cancel command because I didn't use it without filters at first and it just ran and ran and ran and uh, that's not good. So I just canceled that out, waited a minute for it to finalize the cancel and then I reran it with the filters and it, it, everything was right with the world. So we already kind of went over the sub volumes based on mount point, very important to know. And then mounting this directly. Uh, this is actually supposed to be the mount command right here, not better FS, but mount dash O sub volume ID 267. Uh, I actually will fix this when this goes live. Uh, but for today, just know if you, if you get this right as the video is released, uh, it might still say better FS that actually should say mount dash O. So with that, we got snapshots. I already kind of went into actually restoring snapshots because I thought this is the most powerful thing about BetterFS. This is where BetterFS shines. This is where you should be using BetterFS. If you don't use snapshots, honestly, probably should be using a different file system because this is where BetterFS is just awesome. It's, it's great. The performance is awesome. Uh, having this ability is great. Managing it is fairly simple you know once you figure out the sub volumes delete and creating a new snapshot you can manually take snapshots so after making uh, halfway through this tutorial i realized i didn't like my structure and i wanted to just completely move everything off so i kind of changed my f stab and if we look here i want to just walk through how i'm utilizing this um, i changed this i had it own home directory in its own drive and I'm like you know what I don't really like that anymore so I commented this out booted back in of course uh, I had problems booting because my home directory was no longer there and then basically what I did is I mounted this sub volume 267 into like the MNT folder copied it all over to home rebooted and then everything was right with the world and everything sitting on this one drive under sub volume 288. So everything right now, I wanted to make it a little more simplistic uh, and clean up my F-stab. So we're gonna go ahead, kill this, and now we have just kind of an extra disc we can play around with in the next step with multiple discs. Uh, we fixed our F-stab up and, and just kind of simplified it. So if we look at better FS, sub vol, list, and then our mount point of root, you'll notice we have our root and then we have a couple root var things I, I don't know quite what those IDs are typically when you create a system under better FS it, it adds those sub volumes so I'm just gonna leave them alone and then the at symbol that's what we're actually running on that's where all our system is it's what it boots to and if we actually boot into time shift here and we'll log in authenticate uh, we can actually create and we go settings. Here's how I have my time shift set up. Now that we actually are on a sub volume, I have it set as better FS. The location, you just specify your drive that has better FS set up. The schedule, I want daily. Um, users, just include the entire home directory. Now, if you've ever used time shift before, this is a lot better than rsync. So it's kind of cool under users. You just say, yeah, include my entire home directory. That's cool. Uh, and enable queue groups, which is actually good. It's actually for quotas and things of that nature. So it doesn't get out of control. And then miscellaneous just kind of is a naming scheme for the actual uh, thing. So uh, I usually do just the defaults here, but you can actually change this up and get a little fancy with it if you like. But for that, we'll leave it at defaults and come back into here, hit OK. So from here, we can easily just create a snapshot now. Um, now, if you run into a problem using the singular uh, directory, you can come into settings, 
uh, and notice that it uses this at home sub volume. This means you have two drives or two different partitions, one for home, one for root. This would need to be checked and it would need this at home as the actual sub volume name. So very important. My root is just the at symbol, so that works. But if I were to create another sub volume and another drive for my home, it would be need to be named at home for time shift. Or you could just use the command prompt or the CLI. Uh, however, I like how time shift manages this and I just, just really, really dig how it manages this, the snapshot. So very, very fast, a lot faster than rsync and I can restore at any point in time. Now let's get a little more complex here and go into multiple disks. Let's go back to our cheat sheet. Uh, we've got kind of snapshots down pat. Uh, we can create them, we can restore them, we can boot off them. You can do a whole bunch of stuff with better FS snapshots. It comes multiple disks in RAID. And really all RAID is for this is some redundancy. Uh, I didn't put RAID zero or anything for performance in here because honestly, if you're looking for performance, don't use better FS. It's gonna underperform ext4 xfs you name it it's going to underperform it uh better fs though it, it maybe in the future this will change uh you know but I, I still don't trust its striping capabilities there's a lot of issues you know a lot of people said things in the forums raid 5 is still listed as unstable on their site so i uh, don't use raid 5 obviously and uh for today's video let's do a raid 1 setup uh i'd like adding uh that so let's take a look at our entire file system layout in BetterFS. And then we're gonna go ahead and do just a simple RAID 1. And we're not actually creating it, we're gonna add it to an existing and convert an existing BetterFS partition to RAID 1. So uh, we can easily do that by just adding a disk to an existing subvolume. If you look right here, we're gonna just add it. And let's take a look at our mount points and disks real fast, and then we'll see where to add that disk. So we'll do a LSBLK right fast. Uh, you'll see that we have this extra SDE1 disk just kind of hanging out, and then we have that exact same, it's a replica, it's the same disk. So it would make a lot of sense to add this to our existing BetterFS media backup, but we want to verify that is truly a BetterFS thing. So we'll do file system show, and we're going to go media backup. And you'll see that it is labeled data one, it has this UUID. This is a total of one device in here. So I think from here, we can easily add this to uh, this guy. So let's do that. So we'll go better FS device add, and then we choose dev SDE one, and we're going to go ahead and add it to media backup. Oh, and it actually see this already contains an existing file system. Use the F option to overwrite of SDE one. So we could either go into G parted, wipe that out, or we could just do dash F to force it. And then we should have that device on there. So we'll do an LSBLK real fast, see if that changed at all. It hasn't yet, but let's go ahead and do that uh, file system show command again. You'll notice we actually added that device. So this one right here, it has nothing used yet. We need to balance these disks out to truly actually be mirroring everything in the files. So to do that, we simply come into here, we're gonna do a balance and do RAID 1 on our file system mount point. So we'll come back, paste this in, and then it's under Media Backup. So this will go through, balance the first disks, which currently has all the data, with the second disk, which we just added, and it'll be replicating and be that true RAID 1. So we'll have some redundancy built onto the secondary drive. And that's multi-disks. I could go into like RAID 5 and also this, uh, but I don't really like RAID 5. Uh, professionally, I've never used RAID 5 in probably the past 10 years. Uh, media is so cheap that if you really want true redundancy, you should be doing RAID 10, which means get another disk, uh, four disks at a minimum to do RAID 10. So have four identically, you know, labeled disk would be great. If you don't, you can still technically do it. However, I think that's a little janky and why I don't really do anything other than RAID 10 and RAID 1. 
Uh, striped raids is all for performance, and I just don't like this. Honestly, if you just do, if you're a performance junkie, you'd probably be better off just doing a, a striped raid using MD in an EXT4 file system and get higher performance than you'd ever see in a raid zero on better FS. So uh, you can do raid zero using MD on a traditional Linux system and see a decent performance bump, but. I always think striped raids is just silly. You're just asking for problems because if one disk fails, you're completely boned. So with that, that's the basis of BetterFS. Great file system. I love it. I can totally see every single patch. Most kernel patches has some improvement to BetterFS. So I truly think this will be kind of like the future desktop Linux file system. Uh, even though I'm a big ZFS junkie, I know ZFS just really sucks for Linux. Uh, and uh, that's mainly just because of licensing. ZFS itself is still my favorite file system. And if I'm in a business and I want to do file system, I'm never using Linux. Typically, I'm usually using FreeBSD and ZFS uh, whenever possible. But uh, for today, this uh, gets you going on better FS. And that was better FS. And I got to say, in the middle of this video, I started to uh, have issues with my structure. I just didn't like how it looked. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to change this. And I wiped out my home uh, partition and basically put home back onto my root drive and then just kind of changed it up a little bit so we could do that mirroring towards the end. The cool thing about BetterFS is its flexibility. I really didn't talk too much about that, but just being able to add a drive into a RAID 1 and just expand an existing volume is huge. Most most times when you're setting up a RAID, you're wiping out the existing one and then copying all the data over. With BetterFS, you literally just add it into the sub volume and then just go, oh, balance the drives for me. So it'll go ahead and do it all for you. It's really awesome. I absolutely love this for desktop Linux. Again, though, ZFS is still my favorite file system. And that's usually sitting on FreeBSD. Just because of licensing issues with Linux, I really think this is a huge missed opportunity because I do like ZFS better than BetterFS, but I don't like ZFS's implementation of Linux uh, as it's just a little bit cumbersome and uh, how to get it going is kind of hacky. And there's the licensing thing that most people always point to. You know, Linus Torvald's not a big fan of it. But, uh, you know, BetterFS is a good alternative for desktop users as, you know, this is an enterprise. <laughs> for desktop, yeah, BetterFS is probably my favorite file system, something I'm going to just because of that snapshot capabilities. That puts it ahead of almost everything else. That instantaneous, hey, I can immediately revert back to this day and time. Huge snapshots, big time. As far as using RAID and all that other stuff, eh, Take it or leave it. I'm not a huge fan of it. I I just kind of showed a basic mirror here, as that's what probably the extent of the raid I'd use in better FS. Overall, I I was like, yeah, it could turn into something decent, but uh, messing around with raid in its current state in better FS, it's not really recommended. But if you're doing basic mirrors or even raid 10, I think uh, it would be a little more safer than uh, just a straight uh, stripe or raid five. Not not recommended whatsoever so uh, with all that said i've droned on too long i just want to say thank you and be sure and let me know what you think in the comments as i'm always looking forward to reading the comments and with that i'll see you in the next video